Let's see one example for multi-level indexing which helps to understand how the number of disk block accesses can be reduced using multi-level indexing. Consider a large database file having 16k records and the size of each record is 64 bytes. The size of the key field within the record, the size of the key field is 14 bytes. The size of each disk block is 512 bytes and the disk block pointer size is 2 bytes. Let the first level index itself is a sparse primary index where there is one entry per each block. Suppose multi-level indexing is used then how many levels are required, how many blocks are required for each index level then how the number of disk blocks is reduced by multi-level indexing. We can see the first level index itself is a sparse primary index where there is one entry per each block. So to find out the number of entries within the primary index, we should find out the number of blocks required to keep the database file. The size of each disk block is 512 bytes and the size of each record is 64 bytes. Then how many records can we keep in each block? The number of records per block equals 512 bytes divided by 64 bytes. That is 8 records. We can keep 8 records in each block. If 8 records can be kept in one block, then for 16k records, how many blocks are required? 16k divided by 8, that is 2k blocks are required to keep the entire database file. Thus the database file is kept in 2k blocks. For each of this block there will be a record or there will be an entry in the first level index. Then total how many entries will be there in the first level index. The number of entries in the first level index will be 2k. Here the size of the record is size of the key field plus the size of the block pointer because each index entry consists of the key field and a pointer to the disk block. The size of the key field is given as 14 bytes and the size of the block pointer is given as 2 bytes. Then what is the size of each index entry? It is 14 plus 2, 16 bytes. We know the size of the block is 512 bytes and the size of each index entry is found to be 16 bytes. Then how many index entries can be kept in each block? It is 512 divided by 16, 32 entries. If 32 index entries can be kept in a single block, then for 2k entries, how many blocks will be required? 2k divided by 32, 64 blocks are required. Thus, to keep the first level index, how many blocks are required? 64 blocks. So since this index file itself is large and large number of blocks are required to keep this index file, we can create one more index for this index. And that will also be a primary index in which there will be one entry per each block from the first level index. Since there are 64 blocks in the first level index, for each of this block there will be an entry in the second level index. So the number of entries in the second level index is equal to the number of blocks here that is 64. The size of the record in the second level index will be same as the size of the record in the first level index. Here also each index entry will be having the key field and the disk block pointer. The key field size is 14, pointer size is 2, thus the size of the record is 16 bytes. And the size of the block is also same 512 bytes. The how many entries can be kept per block? It is the same 512 divided by 16, 32. 
Thus here also we can keep 32 entries in one block. Then for entire 64 entries how many blocks will be required? 64 divided by 32. That is 2 blocks are required. Thus in order to keep the second level index 2 blocks are required. So we can see this index also cannot fit into a single block. Hence we can go for one more level of indexing. And the third level index will also be a primary index in which there will be one entry per each block from the second level index. Here there are two blocks, thus the number of entries in the third level index will be two. Those two entries kept, can be kept in a single block which has a capacity to keep 32 index entries. Thus, the third level index can fit into a single block so we can stop the multi-level indexing there. Thus, the number of levels required in this case is 3. To keep the database file we need 2k blocks. To keep the first level index we need 64 blocks and to keep the second level index 2 blocks and the last level index can be kept in 1 block. So how many disk block accesses are required here using multi-level indexing? From each level one block has to be accessed. So three disk blocks from the indexes plus one extra block has to be accessed from the database file. Thus one block from each level hence three plus one more block has to be accessed. Thus four disk block accesses are required in this case using multi-level indexing. Now suppose we are not using multi-level indexing. Then this first level index only exists. In such case how many disk block accesses are required? 64 blocks are required to keep this index then we can perform a binary search on this index which will require on the average log 64 to the base 2 that is 6 disk blocks are to be required disk block accesses are to be required from the index and one extra block for the to access the real record hence 6 plus 1 7 disk block accesses are required in the absence of multi-level indexing and if multi-level indexing is used only 4 disk block accesses are required and among them the top level index can be kept in the main memory too. In such case extra 3 disk blocks are only to be accessed. This is how the disk block accesses can be reduced using multi-level indexing.